Hey everyone, it's the Chaplain here coming to you with my BBR series, BBR Explained. The first thing we're going to talk about today is scramble. Now, if you have the BB3 rulebook, we're going to look on page 38. You also have card number 11. It's really easy. Scramble is essentially the same as uh, out of box Global 1940, but this is one of those little nuanced rules that a lot of people... Um, either don't think about or they just, you know, they forget. It's not something that's first and foremost in their mind. They're going to defend London or they're going to defend India or, or a Pacific island and they're just not thinking about it. So um, scramble is, is pretty basic. It's a movement that the defender can make. That's the first line in the explanation in the rule book. It says scrambling is a special movement the defender can make. It has to be done when all of the attacker's movements have been completed. So let's say Germany is deciding to attack London. They're going to move all their units. They're also going to declare all their other combat. Then the defender will say, if they have the ability to, I'm going to scramble. Now, what that means is you have an airbase and you have aircraft that are scramblable, being fighters and tacticals. In BBR and in G40 out of box, you can scramble up to three aircraft per base that is eligible. So if the Germans are attacking through C-Zone 110, or there's a naval battle going on here, this tactical in Scotland couldn't make it, but the French and two British fighters in London could. If the Germans were attacking London, they could scramble as well. And this would cancel out an amphibious assault. If you didn't have ships present, and you didn't want them to get their offshore bombardment shot, you could scramble. Scrambling is really basic. You can scramble up to three planes if you have an airbase. That's pretty much it. So what I want to do now is I want to talk to you about situations in which you would or wouldn't scramble. To start the game of BBR, if you're starting with the 1940s setup, over here in C-Zone 110 and 111, there's a formidable British Navy. There is a, a fighter in Scotland. There's some fighters in London. And essentially, the Germans have a choice to make. Do they want to take out the British Navy early, or do they not? If I remember correctly, there's a, there's a battleship and a cruiser here. There's a battleship and a destroyer or a pair of destroyers. Germany has submarines all throughout this area. They can dedicate any number of units they want that can reach to these two sea zones. Now, I've seen it to where the Germans send a minimal force here into 111, and the scramble from Scotland helps deter them. And then they send the rest of their forces here, and you save your planes, you don't scramble. I've also seen it to where Germany goes heavy into 111 and light into 110, in which case you would want to scramble and destroy any potential they have, because... To start the game, Germany's Navy is pretty much submarines over here and a battleship and destroyer. There's a cruiser and a transport in 114, but honestly, if you're going to make it happen, they have to send their aircraft. And so if you can start digging into that Luftwaffe, if you can start taking out those planes, you're going to be in a good spot. And so those are a couple situ situations where you would versus wouldn't scramble. That was horrible English. Those are a couple situations where you would or would not scramble. I've also seen a couple of games where the Allies build an airbase in Gibraltar and they just try to hold it at all costs. They start landing planes, they start landing uh, ground units, they start making it untakeable, which honestly is a good idea depending on who you're playing and, and their particular strategy. But if the German Navy or the Italian Navy comes at you in Gibraltar, do you want to scramble, do you not want to scramble? It, it's situational. This game really is fully situational. The, the best advice that I can give you is do the math in your head. If it looks like you can start digging into something that is going to hurt them more than it hurts you to lose your planes, scramble all the time. Um, it, it really is 50-50 for me in my games, whether I scramble or not. There's also a couple of situations where I navigate this treacherously. I'm using my tall tripod stand instead of my little one. There's also a few situations in the Pacific where you would consider scrambling. For example, the assault on the Philippines. Um, initially in the 1940s setup, 
if uh, if America leaves their plane and land units and, and ships there, it makes sense to save the plane for the defense of the land because chances are Japan's going to come at you in turn three um, or possibly even turn four. The most that they'll be able to bring against you would be roughly five or six transports if they decided to not move into China as much as they can. So uh, in this case, in the Philippines, I would not scramble. There's other situations where Caroline Islands, if Japan starts moving uh, planes into the Caroline Islands because there's an air base, depending on what you send, they may or may not scramble. I know that this video is a lot of if they, then you, if they, then you, but that's exactly what scramble is. If they do this, should I scramble? Um, I've seen situations where there's an airbase built on, uh, on Egypt or an airbase built into northern Italy. If you build an airbase in northern Italy, then you have two airbases that can scramble up to six aircraft in a fight for 95 or for 97. Like, that's just crazy. So, the scramble card. Airbase has to be operational, which means it can't have taken damage. Only three fighters and tacticals can scramble. Three units can scramble per airbase adjacent to the sea zone or coastal line under attack. Example, if sea zone 6 is under attack, which is over there around Japan, three units can scramble from Japan. If Korea has an airbase, three more units can scramble. Let's take a peek. So, oh no, the Americans are coming into sea zone 6, which is this sea zone surrounding Japan. You have an airbase here. If you've built an airbase here, and you have planes here and here, you can send up to six aircraft in the fight for C-Zone 6. Once scrambled units are chosen, attacker must do at least one round of combat. Once scrambled, there's no retreat for the defender. Scrambled air units defend at their defense stat, conduct your general combat operations. Any surviving scrambled units return to the airbase that they've scrambled from. So... The attacker lays out all their attacks. The defender says, yes, I'm going to scramble. The attacker has to commit to at least one round of combat. That could be devastating. It could be that you, the defender, lose all your planes. It just really depends. The only other place that scramble is super common is over here in India. If there are no British ships and the Japanese are launching an attack, they have amphibious assault shots, etc., etc., you might choose to scramble your planes instead of using them to defend the land of India so that you can get rid of those offshore bombardment shots because those fours from battleships are deadly. They really are. Um, I think that's it. That's the best I have for you here on BBR Explained for Scramble. I know I didn't really... <laughs> it feels like I didn't do much, but hopefully you gained some insight. I'm the chaplain. I'll be praying for you.